you know, when you're looking at it. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, in your PowerPoint, I don't know what uh, page, but it's the picture with high gas flow devices on them. It's four high gas flow devices <coughs> with your PowerPoint. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's oh, it, yeah. Sherry. Mm -hmm. Page 12. Page 12. Slide. Da -da. Slide one. Yep. All right. These are high gas flow systems. We talked about high gas flow systems. And with high gas flow systems, they can do two things. They can meet or exceed the patient's inspiratory demand because we have not only a source of oxygen, but also airflow entrainment, right? Yes. Based off of Bernoulli's principle and Venturi's effect. And because of that, number two, we can deliver specific FIO2s, right? All right. So all high uh, gas flow systems meet and exceed the patient's inspiratory demand, plus can deliver a specific FIO2, right? Correct. All right. Now, one way you've learned to find out what the patient's inspiratory demand is, is take the minute ventilation and multiply by three, right? And that'll give you a ballpark. It's not estimate, but it'll put you there. And you now know minute ventilation is tidal volume times respiratory rate. Yes? Yeah. Right. All right. And you now know that it's two parts to a tidal volume. The part that's not involved in gas exchange, which is called anatomical dead space. Yes? yes? yes. And the part that is directly involved in gas exchange or external respiration is what? Alveolar yeah, ventilation, right? So it's two parts. And the definition of a tidal volume is the amount of air or the volume that a patient moves in and out of their lungs in one quiet breath. The medical term is called eucapnea. Eucapnea is one quiet breath. And then a tidal volume, by definition, is the amount of the eucapnea. And it's two parts, and we just went through them, right? Yes. All right. Any questions with that? Okay, with this PowerPoint on the one with the slides, high gas flow systems. One high gas flow system we discussed was the Venturi mask. The Venturi mask is the exception to the rule because all the other high gas flow systems in addition to being a high gas flow system and a specific FiO2, produces aerosol. Venturi mask is a high gas flow system, but it does not produce an aerosol. It's connected to small bore tubing. So don't get this confused with a low gas flow system, because the low gas flow systems also have small bore tubing, but this does not. This is a Venturi, and I know it's a Venturi mask because I see this port here, and then if I looked at the mask, I see specific FIO2s on it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. All right. And I know that the more room air entrainment, the lower the le FIO2. Yes? Yes. yes. The oxygen is 100% according to FDA, 99.5% pure. Let's believe it's 100%. Coming out of our source, whether it be E tank, H tank, or this, it doesn't matter. The oxygen source is 100%. But if I want to deliver 35% or 24%, what guarantees that? The room air entrainment that's coming through the Venturi. So the more room air entrained, the lower the FiO2. That's what's diluting it, that 100% coming from the oxygen source to the specific FiO2. Right? Correct. And all the flow mm. that the patient is receiving is coming specifically from this Venturi mass. Even though they're breathing spontaneously, all the gas is coming from this mass. So the higher the flow, or the more room air entrainment, the lower the FiO2. 
and we're going to prove that doing our math. All right, so this is the Venturi mask. Okay, these two apparatuses, when I say two, I mean T-O-O. -O. When these, ap these apparatuses themselves are just masks or contraptions, they mean nothing without being attached to the, Vin I'm sorry, not the Venturi mask. They mean, they mean nothing without being attached to the nebulizer. The nebulizer itself is the high gas flow system. But what's unique about the nebulizer, not only is it a high gas flow system, meeting and exceeding the patient's inspiratory demand and delivering a specific FiO2, we know it also produces aerosol because the aerosol, I'm sorry, the nebulizer has a baffle, right? All right. So these are the apparatuses that can be connected to it. Number one, I know this is high gas flow and I know aerosol is coming out of it and I know because it has a Venturi in it, it delivers a specific FiO2. I can see on here whether it's yellow. This doesn't have it, but I know this is a nebulizer and I know this is a nebulizer. This one just happens to have the word nebulizer on it. Okay. I can look up here and I can see specific FiO2. So that too is telling me that it is capable of delivering a specific FiO2 as well as this one. And actually it's re easier to read. Don't get this confused with color code and think this has to be compressed air. That's not true. This is a nebulizer. It can be connected to an oxygen source. It just so happens this company manufactures it in yellow and I can see different FiO2s, right? Yes. But I also see large bore tubing. Mm -hmm. So the large bore tubing tells me that it's a high gas flow system, but it produces aerosol, mm -hmm. right? So what I have here is corrugated tubing, and it just happens to be blue. This can be blue, it can be green, it can be clear, it can be purple. Long as it's large bore, or what we call corrugated tubing, I know it's for a high gas flow system and I know it's for a nebulizer. This over here is connected to a ventilator. This is a ventilator circuitry. It's two corrugated tubing. So just looking at it, I know this machine can deliver a specific FiO2 and it can deliver high humidity. Make sense? Yes. Just by mere identification of this tube. All right? We're not working with mechanical ventilators, but same kind of tube. It's just longer. All right. This is a trait collar. This goes, uh, this attaches to an individual who, for whatever reason, and you'll learn about the difference between an endotracheal tube and a trait. When, when, the, when you meet the criteria later, that's not the point for this uh, semester. This is a trach collar. This is a person that has a tracheostomy. The upper airway has been bypassed and the function of the nose is to do what? Humidify. 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 They're not breathing through their nose. They're breathing through the trach. So we have to provide high humidity. We have to provide the humidity source. So we take the trach collar attach it to a nebulizer. Not only can we deliver a specific FiO2, we can provide a high gas flow system that meets and exceeds their inspiratory demand, and we're delivering high humidity. The trait collar by itself is nothing. It has to be attached to a nebulizer. But you need to be able to identify a trait collar, so if you have to go get one, you'll know what it is. So the trait collar by itself is not a high gas flow system. The nebulizer, being attached to this nebulizer, it's what makes it a high gas flow system. These are just masks or apparatuses. Okay? Next is an aerosol mask. Same thing. We want to just deliver high humidity. We could put a one-way valve in here and make this a simple mask, but connected to this large bore tubing, it's an aerosol mask. 
The mask by itself means nothing. Attached to a nebulizer makes it a high gas flow system. So you have to be able to identify. Do I, do I need to pass these around or do you all have these in your yeah. equipment kit? Yeah, we do. Okay. All right. Next is a T-bar. This is called a T-bar, a Briggs T adapter, or T piece. Same thing. Here it is. It can be clear. It can be green. It can be blue. It can be purple. It's a T-bar. Where did it come from? Here's your T. And most of the time, oh, I put this on here pretty tight. Most of the time, they're attached to patients who have artificial airways in, such as an endotracheal tube. This would be cuffed. And basically what it's for is either the patient is coming off the ventilator or it may be we don't want to put the patient on the ventilator. Like say, for instance, just to give you an example so you can make sense of this, a patient has been in a house fire or been exposed to carbon monoxide poisoning. They come in and they have these red, rosy tree, uh, cheeks and PO2s reading 300, 400s. We know that that's false. We know that they're experiencing tissue hypoxia. But one of the dangers of being in a house fire and sometimes carbon monoxide poisoning is that later on, not right when, the, when you see the patient, but later on, 8, 12 hours, Later on, their airways will go through some traumatic experience and it swell and swell. Mm -hmm. A smart therapist and an acute or keen uh, ER physician will go ahead and intubate the patient so that if later on the airway swells, the artificial airway is in place. Because what happens if the airway swells, <laughs> once it swells, they may not be able to get this tube through. So what am I saying? You can uh, have a patient intubated and not placed on a ventilator. But because they're intubated, the upper airway has been bypassed. Everybody with me? They're mm -hmm. not breathing through their nose. So we have to provide high humidity. We attach this T-bar. And sometimes it's not easy. What you have to do is take it and put it on gently. And this becomes more difficult as the uh, equipment is moistened. This, of course, would be longer. Here's your nebulizer delivering a high gas flow system. Here's your nebulizer delivering high humidity. And here's your nebulizer del delivering a specific FiO2. So the patient continuously, spontaneously breathes, but they have an artificial airway in place. And the T-bar is the mechanism or the attachment between the nebulizer and the artificial airway. Yes? Now, because that T-bar is open on one end, that's almost like an additional air entrainment port, isn't it? I mean, isn't that going to be pulling room air in? What we do is we attach another piece here and it helps maintain a uniform FiO2. And this is what we'll see. It's not another source of room air entrainment. All the flow that they're going to receive is through here. Okay. And we put a reservoir on the end. Yes. So when they're okay. not inhaling, will you see a mist coming out at all? Absolutely. And you always want to see a mist. I'll go over that again in humidity and aerosol. We haven't gotten right. it. You always want to see a mist, and then you know your flow is adequate. Okay. This is how you know your flow is adequate. You want to see some smoke come out of here. You go to concerts, and you see all that smoke, and you get, yay! All it is an aerosol. They're producing aerosol. Okay? okay. That's, that's why you wouldn't, I'm sorry, Ms. Miller, that's why you would not block that off. Oh, no, you can't block it off. No, 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 no. You can't, don't block it off. So a patient can have an artificial airway in place and not be placed on mechanical ventilation. And if they have to be placed, we just remove the T-bar and put them on the ventilator. Okay? So some people will need an artificial airway in, but they're breathing on their own. So if they 
if they're breathing on their own, they don't have to be placed on mechanical ventilation. We would provide a high gas flow system, humidity, and an FiO2 via connection of the T-bar. So all respiratory care equipment is, most of it is 50 PSI, pneumatically powered, but our adapters are 15 millimeters adapters. And so a T-bar is 15 millimeter adapter. Our corrugated tubing is for 15 millimeter adapters and it will attach to all endotracheal tubes. Now the only thing, and trach tubes as well, the only thing is when you start dealing with pediatrics and the babies, that's another world, but that's standardized too. But for right now, the 15 millimeter adapter is for adults. All our equipment fits. You've got to make it fit, but it will fit some kind of way. And so it would be longer tubing, obviously. This is close. It would be longer tubing. But we can provide humidity because the upper airway has been bypassed. We can provide a specific FiO2, and we are providing a high gas flow system. So the patient doesn't have to depend upon their own minute ventilation to receive what they need. Regardless of the FIO2, whether the FIO is 228 or 50, it doesn't matter. The T-bar is the uh, adapter. And again, the T-bar, the aerosol mask, the face tent, or the tray collar, the, the, alone, they're just masks. Attached to the nebulizer is what makes it a high gas flow system, okay? And once in a while, You'll see these used in patients perhaps who have had um, maybe a, a deviated septum and they've had to have surgery and they can't tolerate a mask being right on their face. They can't tolerate it. Uh, once in a while we may use these for individuals who've had some kind of jaw surgery and again they can't tolerate it. So this is a supplement or if you will can replace an aerosol mask for patients who cannot tolerate a mask directly on their face. <coughs> okay? All right. Now, the only thing about this that I want you to know, and I will re-emphasize it in humidity and aerosol, aerosol, high humidity, makes asthmatic squeeze. That aerosol will irritate the airway and make an asthmatic squeeze. Yeah, you shouldn't. If they need a high gas flow system, put them on a Venturi mask. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So if a person needs a high gas flow system just for the FiO2, you're going to recommend the Venturi mask. If a patient needs a high gas flow system because their airway needs to be humidified, then you will use the nebulizer and the appropriate mask. So you, as a therapist, have to know when to use an apparatus because a physician may not. A physician may say, give them a nasal cannula, two, three liters per minute, and that's not appropriate at all. Well, you have to know what recommendation to make and why. Yes, sir. So if you run a venti mask at, say, 12 liters, uh, that it, even though they're using their nose to humidify <laughs> with the venti mask on, that is not going to dry them out? I mean, how high can, can you max out a venti mask at 15 liters a minute? You can, but you can add humidity to it. You can? You can add mask? humidity, yeah, because it's small bore too. And you'd use, a, you'd use a bubbler with that, correct? Yep. Okay. You can, if they need it. I read somewhere in the book that you can't use um, humidity with a venturi mask. You can. You yeah, that's can. why I asked. You can. You can. You okay. can. Yes, you can. Okay. You can use it, yes. You just can't use high humidity. Yeah. So you wouldn't use a large volume nebulizer with it, you just, you'd use the, you just use the bubble. bubble. Gotcha. Use the bubble. Because they still are inhaling, you know, with their, the, whatever flow, the, even though the flow is just coming from the Venturi mask, they still are using their nostrils to humidify it. Maybe a bit off track, but if you're running a venti mask with a small bore tube and you're using a, a nebulizer as well. You're not using a not nebulizer, nebulizer but, a, but a bubbler. Would you use a catch cup for condensation? Not necessarily, because it's not producing aerosol. So you wouldn't you wouldn't worry about a line inclusion because of the extra condensation coming off that bubbler. Nope. Okay. Nope. 
a, a humidifier is molecular water. Aerosol is particulate water. There's a big difference. Yeah, not necessarily. And then when someone is on a Venturi mask, you got to remember now, they're not going to be on a Venturi mask forever and a day. A person can be on a nasal cannula for a long time. It's easier, they can eat, they can talk, whatever. A Venturi mask, you're not going to keep patients on that forever and a day. You want to try to get them off that Venturi mask, let the, allow the Venturi mask to achieve whatever purpose it's going to do or whatever you're trying to correct, then get them off of that. And then perhaps put them on a nasal cannula or off completely. And most patients, when they no longer need oxygen, you'll find it hang hanging off the side of their bed, in between the sheets, or whatever. It's just like babies, you know, some adults, and I'm one that didn't believe in it, I figured it out. Um, some adults believe in trying to take bottles from babies. I don't believe in that. When they don't want it, they'll throw it out the window or whatever. When Paulette didn't want her bottle anymore, I would catch her pouring her milk down my hat sock. I knew she didn't need a bottle anymore. Then I started giving her a cup. Okay, so when people don't need oxygen, you'll find that it'll be turned off or it'll be tucked up. Oh, I haven't needed that since yesterday or I only need that at night. Most people, when they don't need oxygen, they won't use it. Okay, believe it or not. I don't need that anymore. Or, I don't like using that because it makes my nose cruddy or it gives mm -hmm. me boogers or whatever they may say. So they don't probably need it. You can check with the pulse ox and more than likely they're right. The only patients that, meet, that may be chronically dependent upon oxygen is really psychological would be your chronic hypoxemic patients. A lot of them feel as though they may not make it uh, without oxygen but they probably would be better off if they stopped smoking, but that's another, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's another word. Okay, so now you know these are the four apparatuses that will be connected to high humidity. And the only time you would use a T-bar, this would be for an artificial airway. The only time you use the trach collar would be for a patient who has a trach. Plain and simple. If, you don't, if it's not a trait involved, there's no indication for a trait collar. And then what is most common is the aerosol mask. And patients who don't tolerate the aerosol mask can have the face mask. Okay. Any questions? That's high gas flow system. The little T bar goes to the um, that's artificial. The endo, yeah, this is called an endotracheal. It can be a patient can be in the, um, intubated through their mouth, and we call it oral endotracheal, or they can be intubated through their nose, and it would be nasal tracheal. But you still need humidity. If they but you still need nose. humidity, and if they're not on a mechanical ventilator, then the T bar would be the device that connects between here and the nebulizer. Yes. I've seen people with the T bar in and they have like a little like a bite plate tube almost in their mouth and they're taking air in that way? No, the bite plate is to prevent them from biting this. Okay. If they bite this, they occlude flow. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I was asking. And that's the oral pharyngeal airway at that point is called a bite block. Okay. And it's to keep um, them from biting down on the tube. Yeah, I've never seen them open their mouths. So I didn't know if the tube was in there. It was just they were take, trying to take in air separately. No. So no. that's to prevent them from cutting off their tube. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this so one's clear. The Venturi mask is not aerosol. Right, but it's a high humidity. gas flow system. But it's humid. There's humidity. There's some humidity, okay. yes. But with the uh, large volume nebulizer is aerosol. Yes. Uh, so, and those are the four devices that can be connected to the large volume nebulizer. Yes. And you have to know when to use each one appropriately. Okay. Yes. yes. And the difference is the Venturi mask, the little, the different little pieces are the ones that give you that specific FiO2 that attaches to the, the little yeah. tubing. This it one does too, to but it's in there. Okay. It's in there already. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and the same thing, this meets and exceeds. You have this port open. So just by me looking at this, 
I know this, I don't, I haven't looked at it, but I know this device set the way it is, it's delivering a lower FiO2 because I see more room, air, and train that can go in. All right? And then if I see it like this, I'm not even looking at the FiO2. I know it's delivering a higher FiO2 because I see less room, air, and training. See it? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when you take your boards, they're going to ask you, how do you troubleshoot? They're not going to ask you about Venturi's effect and Bernoulli's effect. They're not going to, they're going to ask you to troubleshoot. So they may ask you a question, but I want to wait till we get to humidity and aerosol, like Kyle asked. What if you have condensation in the tubing? What is that going to do to the FiO2 of a high gas flow system? What is that going to do to the total flow? Okay, so I always use the analogy in, in this program, uh, we teach you how to take coffee, brew it in a coffee pot, and pour it slowly and drink it out of a cup. But on your boards, they don't ask you that. They ask you, how do you take that same coffee that you brewed in that coffee pot, put it in a, soft, so, in a saucer and sip it? And this is why I'm challenging you from the beginning, and, and, and when I say this, not to offend you, but think like a therapist, to critically think. You have to see things two and three dimensional. Okay? Troubleshooting is just as important in identifying. And so you have to know these apparatuses. This is what we do and when to appropriately use them because all physicians may not be familiar and not know. And you can't go to someone and say, well, just because I said so, you've got to be able to explain to them what they don't need a nasal cannula. The patient has a trach. The patient needs a trach collar. So I need you to change the order. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And you have to know, well, my patient isn't tolerating this. Your departmental protocol may say, automatically tell you, if a patient can't tolerate this, put them on this. And you need to know, go, to get, go get one of these. Mm -hmm. Try it. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, so these are high humidity devices. But uh, again, the, the masks themselves <coughs> do nothing. They have to be attached to the nebulizer. And the nebulizer delivers the specific FiO2, it is a high gas flow system, and then it also produces aerosol because it has a vacuum in it. So nebulizers have those three things. It can produce the high humidity or aerosol because it has the baffle, it has the Bernoulli and Venturi effect which delivers a specific FiO2, and because it can deliver a specific FiO2, it can meet and exceed the patient's inspiratory demand. And always an exception to the rule, the Venturi mask, it too is a high gas flow system, but its purpose is not for high humidity or aerosol. Its purpose is to deliver a specific FiO2. Okay, so you got your low gas flow systems, and if you just look at the tubing of the Venturi mask, it just looks like a low gas flow system. But I know that it's not because I see these ports open. And again, I see that's where the room air entrainment is, so it increases total flow. Okay? Any questions? All right, now we're going to begin the math. I know you started it. Some of you hate math. Well, what can I say? <clears throat> The first part is you could possibly have on your board, or you may be working with babies, and you have to know how to mix and train room air and entrain oxygen and come up with an FiO2. Okay? The magic box is a little different. The magic box, you have the FiO2. This, it's on your PowerPoint. I don't know what slide it is. Slide 13? Or page 13. Page 13. Oh, page 13. Okay, it's yeah. there. I've written it on the board, and I know some of you are visual. We have the parts. We've got something. We've got a device. And in my problem, I think on yours, it's three parts. But I have a device that delivers five parts air and one part oxygen. Oxygen will always be one. 
Oxygen is always the one to the right. Got it? Mm -hmm. So I got a device that delivers five parts air and one part oxygen. And I want to know what is the FiO2 it's delivering. Well, one thing that I can tell you, and I don't know what page it is in Egan's, when I was in school, and that was in the 70s, we didn't have a magic box. We had to remember the ratios. So I know the ratios. I do. I know the ratios. But somebody got smart and said, well, if you don't memorize the ratios, is this the ratios here? It's on page 925. You can do it either way. You can just memorize the ratios like Kathy Miller had to do. And that's up to you. Or you can do these formulas. So at least you had a choice. I had to memorize these suckers. But I know them. <laughs> I know them. I know three to one is 40%. And that's pretty much standard, but I don't want to guarantee that. Okay. Anyway, here's the formula. Airflow times 21. What's airflow? The parts of air in the problem times 21. Where did the 21 come from? Because that's room air, FiO2. Plus O2 times 100%. Any number times 100% is that number, right? But... We just need, I'm sorry, don't put the percent there. But that helps. And then by total flow. So here I got five to one. And over here I got this is the air. Five parts air to one part oxygen. Any questions with that? No. no. Okay. Now on an exam, you'll just have five to one. You need to know that air is five and the oxygen is one. If you look on page 925, you'll see air to oxygen ratio in the middle. You'll see oxygen is always one, one part. So this is saying for every one liter of oxygen that's flowing to the patient, in my problem, is five parts air. And we want to know what are we delivering. Well, one easy way, we could take an oxygen analyzer, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we don't have one. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. I don't allow cursing in my class. I really don't. That's disrespectful to me as well as your peers. Yes, don't let it happen again. All right. Um, we could take an oxygen analyzer and we could analyze it. But let's say we're just getting started and we want to get in the ballpark. This is a way to figure it out. Okay, what will really be easy is get an oxygen analyzer and just stand there and increase the air until you get what you want. But nevertheless, you can have a problem like this probably on your certification. So here's the formula. You have to know the formula. So I took 5 times 21. Where did I get the 5 from? That part. Mm -hmm. And there's the 21. Mm -hmm. And then I took 1 part oxygen times 100. And then the total flow is the 5 and the 1. I got 6. See it? Mm -hmm. All right. So 5 times 21 is what? 105. And then 1 times 100 is what? 100. Any questions with that? Nope. So let's plug in numbers. What did you say this was? 105? Yes, ma'am. And so that equals what? 205? And 205 divided by 6. Yes? Okay, do 205 divided by 6. 34. So my FiO2 is about 34%. All right. Now, as the airflow increases, the FiO2 is going to go down because we're adding more air. Does that make sense? Did everybody get this? I don't want to go any further until you get this. Yes, sir? Yeah, the, the 5 plus 1, I, I didn't understand that. How you doing? 5 plus parts one. air plus 1 part oxygen. 5 plus 1 this equals 6. six. Okay. Total flow. And in this type of problem, you're going to give us the, air, the ratio. Has right? to be. It has to be because we can't figure it out either way, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And up here, I got ratio 3 to 1, 5 to 1. We're going to do all of these. Oh. So, but what I want to do first, this is 5 to 1. I got 5 to 1. Let me do an odd one. Do 8 to 1. First part, let's do 24 to 1. Okay. Plug in 24. Okay. 
So what's the total flow? 25. See that, Kyle? 24 and 1 equals what? 25. So the total flow is what, Kyle? 25. There you go. So has everybody gotten this? Set it up like this. 24 times 21. This is where, where did 24 come from? 24 parts air mm -hmm. times room air plus one times, and then the total flow, which Kyle gave us, is 25. Everybody here so far? Yep. Yes. All right, so what's 24 times 21? 504. 504 plus 100 is what? 604. 604? Yes. Kind of right. And then we're going to divide it by 25? It's 24.16. 24 point what? One six. One six. One six. Mm -hmm. And look in your book on page what? 925. 925 and look and see what that ratio is. What's that FIO2? 25 to 1. 25 to 1? Mm -hmm. Okay, so our FIO2 is now what? About 24%. Yes? Yes. All right. 24%. Now, I wanted to compare something. Look at the first one we did. It was 5 to 1, right? Mm -hmm. And our file 2 came out to be about 34%. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, we did a ratio 24 to 1, and our file 2 came out much lower, 24%. So that supports what I've been saying. The more room air in train, the lower the FIO2. Because the oxygen doesn't change. It's the room air that changes. And so when you change the port on the Venturi mass or a high gas flow system, that's, that will determine the FiO2. The more room air in train, the lower the FiO2. Right? Okay. So we did 24 to 1, and we got an FiO2 of about 24%. Yes? Mm -hmm. We did 5 to 1, and we got an FiO2 of about 34%, right? Yeah. right? Now let's do 8 to 1. What's the total flow? 9. Nine. 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 <clears throat> Everybody got this so far? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. Does anybody care about this except a respiratory therapist? No. <laughs> we know we need to know how to get an FIO2 even if we're using parts. Whatever it is, we know it's a high gas flow system, yes? This is a high gas flow system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's yes. high gas flow because it is giving us, we're finding a specific FiO2. Yeah, we're, we're mixing air and oxygen together. Anytime you mix air and oxygen, a fixed ratio, that's a high gas flow system. Okay, 8 times 21? 168. 168 plus 100 equals 268 divided by 9. And what's the FIO2? 29.7. 29.7, so I'm going to make it 30%. 30%. Any questions? Yes. So maybe on like a question that we would see is you, you're asking, or you would, like we said, you would give us the ratio. We'd say a patient's uh, air to O2 ratio is six to one, or however it is. We just need to find the FiO2. It, the, and the problem would say that. What is the FiO2 being delivered to the patient? Okay. 
you, you have an oxygen app or, or you have a device because we have blenders over there generally for the babies that bleed in oxygen and will bleed in air, okay? And the doctor says, I want an FiO2 of 35%. You've got to know how much air to bleed in and you've got to know how much oxygen to bleed in. But oxygen is always one part. Mm -hmm. So you have to calculate the ratio to find the FiO2. So are we knowing how to work backwards from a 32, like 32 percent FiO2 to a ratio, or is that not, is that not? You don't know, you don't know, you have a device that is capable of delivering FiO2, okay. but it's based on the amount of air okay. in train and based on the amount of oxygen in train. Okay. You have to make the decision how to set it up, because <coughs> physicians are not going to know how to do that. Okay. Yeah. Now, what really, to be honest with you, what may be easy, whatever the device is, the manufacturer has given you a ratio. But in the meantime, Good. we're learning. And you're going to say, well, how did they come up with that? If you know how to do this, you'll see how they came up with this. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes? Did a physician ask for, like you said, 35%? You can't put a 35% on no. a baby. No, I mean, not for a baby, but I'm just saying a physician says to have 35% oxygen. Wouldn't you do the air to oxygen ratio? Or no, no I would get a 35% Venturi mask. Okay. Yeah, if it's, if it's an adult. Yeah, okay. but in this case, it could be a baby. And I saw Pope had a, she moves things. This is an air oxygen blender. And it does not have an FiO2 on here. You have to see where it says air oxygen blender. You have to bleed in, and you have to determine how much air you're going to bleed in with the oxygen, and that will determine your FiO2. And so you have to know how to do that. That's what this does. And then after you know how to, after you learn how to do this, then you get an analyzer and analyze the environment to see if you're in the ballpark. Okay. Yeah. okay? So it's still a high gas flow system. Remember, we just look at things two, three-dimensional. We understand you bleed in oxygen, you bleed in room air, you're going to have a greater total flow. And with the Venturi mask, they've made it simple for us. You just dial it in. But you may have another type of device, particularly with the babies, where you have to figure out the ratio. And this is a common question on certification, not so much registry, but certification. So some of you may have to calculate the duration of the H tank. All of you are going to have to calculate minute ventilation, I guarantee you. Um, but you may, they may ask you, you have a device that has a fixed ratio of 7 to 1. You have to know the 7 is air, the 1 is oxygen. <coughs> calculate the FiO2. This is the formula. And what I do, I don't want to confuse anybody. I'll never do this part because I know it's always one. So whatever I get for here, I just add 100 to it. But you can't forget to add the 100. So if you know that you may forget it, go ahead and set your formula up like this. But I know I just add 100 to it. And I take the parts, the total of the parts. If it's 8 to 1, my total parts is 9. If it's 24 to 1, my total parts is 25. You add the flow together because they're going in together. Does that make sense? Okay, that's how you calculate FiO2. Any questions? Now let's do this magic box. Magic box, you have the FiO2, and now you need to find out what the parts are. What's always going to be one part? Oxygen. oxygen is always going to be one. And so Miss Pope, I know, is ahead of, of, ahead of us here. And with the magic box, there's a rule she gave you. FiO2 or below 40, what do, number do you use? 21. 21. 20. And if it's over... 40, what do you use? 21. 21. 
Does everybody agree? Because I ask her every week and I forget. Yes. I don't know. You don't know what what means. The Monday group didn't do it. The Wednesday group did it. Oh, FIO2. I'm referring to FIO2. Okay. Magic box. I'm doing it now. All right. In the lower left hand corner, is this my left? Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> You're good. You always put a hundred. Always put your hundred there. All right. And let's say the FIO2 is, I'll use 30%. You always, this is your FIO2. You always put your FIO2 in the middle. Now what we're doing is we're trying to find the parts, okay? All right. And then up here, because this FiO2 is less than 40, remember 40 or less, up here you're going to put 20. If this FiO2 was 50, we would change that to 21, right? Right. All right. Okay. Any questions with this? Lower left-hand corner is always 100%. In the middle is your FiO2. That has to be given. <coughs> Any questions? Yeah, I think I'm just confused because um, Ms. Pope told us in lab if it's less than 40, we use 21. Yeah, right. That's page, what I asked you. Yeah, because on page 925, it has FiO2 of 70 and they're using 20. So I All think right. it was just switched. So less than 40 is, is 21. It's yeah. 0 .21. All right. And greater than 40 is 20. Points 20. All right. I should put points. So I'm going to change my FIO2 to 50 for the sake of this. All right? Okay. All right. So 40% or less FIO2, this number over here means FIO2. We're going to use 21 if it's less than 40%. Equal to or less than? How do you write equal to or less than? Did I write that right? <laughs> Just one line. Just one. I yep. thought I had it right. You did. Okay, Maria, I'm doing the Maria here, changing my answer. <gasps> <laughs> All right. And then here, this should be. Greater than 40%, we use, this is again, FIO2, we use the number 20. Everybody got that? Yes. Are we all on the same page? Mm -hmm. All right. So we got an FIO2 here, 50%, and I want to know what are the parts air, and I want to know what are the parts oxygen. Okay. This came out before the people who manufactured Venturi masks set it up. All right. You guys had his privy. I didn't. There didn't. This didn't exist in the 70s. So here's my FiO2 at 50%. In my lower left-hand corner, I put 100. In my upper left-hand corner, I put 20. Right? All right. 100 minus 50 is 50. Right? All right. See what I did? Any questions? All right. Now, I can't go this way. So 50 minus 20 is what? 30. 30. 30. All right. I know my one part oxygen is over here. So what I'm solving for is really air. Yes? Yeah. All right. So what do I do next Wednesday, group? Uh, group? 50 divided by 30. 50. And where did I get 50 from? Uh, mm -hmm. Here. This is my numerator. And divided by 30. Where did I get 30 from? 50. From here. So somebody do 50 divided by 30. 1.6. 1.6. 1.6. So my ratio is 1.6 to 1. What is this saying? I have 1.6 air and one part oxygen, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Now, what's my total flow? Add all of this together. 
Equal 2.6. 2.6. Now let's say I, I have a patient on a mask or whatever apparatus, I don't, whatever, and the flow is at 12 liters per minute. Everybody with me? I give you a problem and the flow is at 12 liters per minute. After you figured this out, and we just did, FiO2 of 50%, the ratio is for air, 1.6 to 1 liter of oxygen. Yes? Mm -hmm. I add them together for my total flow and I got 2.6. And then I have this device set to deliver 12 liters per minute. I multiply it by 12. So what's the total flow? I don't know what this 31. is. 31.2. 31.2, so I'm just going to say 31 liters per minute is the total flow. Oh, you had your hand up. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the question came up yesterday when we, we were kind of, when we were studying this was that if I've got, when I do the first part, when I add the 1.6 plus the 1, which gives me the 2.6 in this case, <laughs> let's just say that instead of 1.6, I had 1.1. Do I just round down and just add 1 plus 1? Would it have given me 2? No, nope, you, okay. you keep it as such. Okay. To put you in the ballpark. All right. Okay. All right. Now, I want to know, is this a high gas flow system? I know whatever this apparatus is, we're using, set at 12 liters per minute, delivers a total flow of 31 liters per minute, and I know that FiO2 is 50%, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's say, let's do this. Uh, uh, wait a minute, let me figure it out. Patient's tidal volume is 500 milliliters, write it down. Patient's tidal volume is 500 milliliters, and their respiratory rate is 12. If I want to find out if this is truly a high gas flow system, what's the next step that I need to do? Get the minute ventilation. Get the minute ventilation. So figure out the minute ventilation. Five hundred. The respiratory rate is twelve, and the tidal volume is five hundred milliliters. Six. 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 The minute ventilation is six liters per minute. Uh -huh. All right. And then, if I want to know if this is a high gas flow system, what do I do next? I got a minute ventilation. What do I do next? What do I do? How do I get that? Multiply uh, six by three. Multiply the minute ventilation of six times three. And what's the answer? Eighteen. Eighteen liters per minute. Is this a high gas flow system for this patient? Yes. Yes, it is. The patient's minute. Oh, I'm sorry. The patient's inspiratory demand is eighteen liters per minute. This gas flow system is delivering thirty-one liters per minute. So it is indeed meeting and exceeding the patient's inspiratory demand and delivering an FiO2 of 50%. See that? Any questions? Let's do another one. And I'm going to change the FiO2. The 100 remains the same. Let's look at our rule over here. Look at your rule over there. We have the FiO2. Now we want to calculate total flow. But before we calculate total flow, we have to see how much part <coughs> of it is in. So now we have an FiO2 of 40%. No, I want to change that. 32%. So what goes here? We have to change this to 21, right? Mm -hmm. All right, work it. <laughs> We know one part is oxygen.
This is the numerator. And this is the denominator. If that helps. Denominator. Yes, that's right. What 100 minus 32 is? 68. 68 over 11. Okay, 32 minus 21 is 11. So 68 divided by 11 is what? 6.1. 6 6.1? 8. 6.2, if you round it. 6.2, all right. So what's the total flow? 7.2 liters per okay. minute. And then let's say this apparatus is running at 8 liters per minute. What's total flow? 57.6. Yes. So I can yep. just say 57 or 58. 57.6 liters per minute or 58 liters per minute. That's total flow. So with an FiO2 of 30%, I'm sorry, 32%, I know I need, if you will, a 6.2 of air to one part oxygen. Got it? Yeah. All right. And then this apparatus, this what I would give you in the formula, this particular apparatus is running at a flow of 8 liters per minute. So what's the total flow? 57.6 or 58. Now, on, on my exams, I'm not going to have decimals, so you would just round this up to 58 meters per minute. And I'm not going to have you choose between 57 or 58. Got it? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, is the 7.2 also called total flow? That's the part, total parts. Okay. This is total parts. This is air and oxygen parts, and total flow will be based on what your flow meter is set on. I'm sorry, that's total parts. Okay? That's the magic box. What's so difficult about it? You all make things hard. You all make things much more difficult. So now you know what to do. If you have an FiO2 and you're looking for parts air and parts oxygen, you do the magic box. If you have parts air and oxygen, then you can calculate the FiO2. That is not the magic box. That's the first part we did, the formula. But if I ask you to give me a magic box, you got to do it. But I'm going to tell you, and it's up to you, it doesn't matter to make it simple. If you learn table 38.7, you got it. You learn that, but I don't want to confuse anybody. It's up to you what you do. Yes. In the book, there, which is what I had left by, this is basically the same thing that we're doing in the magic box, right? Yep. Okay. Some people are more visual, and they need a magic box. This is a quick way to set it up. I, I don't bother with this. I, I know FIO2s and flows. But this works. This, this, this does work. It'll put you in the ballpark. Then what you have to figure now, we know by definition that all high gas flow system meet and exceeds the patient's inspiratory demand. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Let's say, for instance, and we're not going to do it now because I know it's almost time to end class. But let's say, I won't use this one, but go back to the first problem that we did where the total flow was 31 liters per minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know you have air bleeding in and you have oxygen bleeding in and you had a total flow of 31 liters per minute. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. But let's say the patient's inspiratory demand, we calculated the patient's inspiratory demand and they're in distress. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And their total flow is 40 liters per minute. If their total flow is 40 liters per minute, that problem that we just did, it's not a high gas flow system for that patient because it's not meeting 
nor exceeding the patient's demand. Hmm. So, so it's only considered high flow as long as we're above. As long as you're above it. it. So the numbers, got to see the numbers. Right. They're saying 40 and we got 38. Right. So That's wrong. So I don't want you to always think, and I'm going to give you problems like that, that you run. Now, these, by definition, you learn what they are meet and exceed the patient's inspiratory demand. But if in that problem, the patient's inspiratory demand is greater than that total flow, you need to change the device, because that's not it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if we use that first problem, the patient's um, inspiratory demand is 40 liters per minute. And that device was only capable of delivering 31 mm -hmm. liters per minute that is not a high gas flow system for that patient. We got to crank up the air. We got to pull in more air. So then we have to make the decision, do we need to change the device or can they tolerate a lower FiO2? See how we have to think? Okay, so this is the first step. And so it's not difficult. Just do it that way. You've got two formulas. One, the magic box, you want to calculate what is the total flow. And two, the first one, you have the uh, flow and you want to calculate the FiO2. Make sense? You have to know how to find a minute ventilation because I'm not giving that to you. And you have to know how to calculate inspiratory flow. You have to know that. Okay. Any questions on anything we've done today? Yes. Right. And don't don't forget this rule. This is FIO2. Excuse me. If the FIO2 is equal to or less than 40, you use 21. If the FIO2 is greater than 40, you use 20. Yes, ma'am. We I got an email about the registering for classes? Is that something that you're going to... Um, Don't even worry about that. Learn this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't even worry about that. I got your back. I'm program director. I'm on my game. Okay, All, right. All right. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. When, when looking at the determining FiO2 um, of air to oxygen, the formula that you showed at the first one, uh, compared to the... Um, magic box. If we use the, the first formula, we could determine the same information, right? What same information? Like if, if we're looking for the ratio, we can use the same formula or use the, the first formula to determine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, okay. Yes, you can. Okay. It just depends on what's being asked. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I may ask you what's the FiO2 or I may ask you what's the total flow. If I ask you what's the total flow, You've got to figure this out to get the total flow. Right. Okay. And if you don't do this correctly, your total flow is off. Right. right. Okay. And if I add, I may ask you, does it meet and exceed the patient's inspiratory demand? I know that you had to go through all these steps, right. plus the minute ventilation to find the inspiratory demand to tell me yes or no. Okay. Yes, you can. Yes. And, and I think, I don't know if it's take home exam one or take home exam two has some of these formulas on it. Yeah. You have the sheet, but I have other formulas for you as well. I can give it to you today, but some of these things we haven't done, and so don't get upset, but we will start doing them on Monday. It's more math. And you're gonna be grateful once you get into mechanical ventilation how to do this stuff. So let's take these. I can only attack a Tack one thing at a time. If any of you have questions on the take home exam, I don't even remember what it was, but if there's anything I need to show you how to do on there, I'll be happy to show you how to do it. But all your take home exams flow with what we're going over in, com in class. Inspiratory time, expiratory time, flow, whatever, all of it. And you've got to know how to do it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. No, the workbook will be due the day of the exam. 
Yeah, my rules don't change. Unless I change. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.